Hello and welcome to the QA Underground. In today's video on AI and testing, continuation from our previous video on convolutional neural network. Today we're going to discuss how we would integrate a CNN model into our existing Selenium Palm framework. In our previous video, we covered what a convolutional neural network was and how we could prepare the model to be consumed by an existing framework. We covered how we have a data set of images that are then fed through a convolutional layer and pooling layer. And finally, we have our fully connected layer that applies the labels to the images and outputs the model. So the first thing I want to talk about is existing automation frameworks, right? Selenium specifically, we have a number of different frameworks that we can utilize. We have data-driven frameworks, modular-driven frameworks, hybrid frameworks. Really, there's too many to list here. The reason why we're picking the page object model is because the Palm frameworks are incredibly popular within the test automation space. They've been around forever, so they've had the opportunity to mature under different development life cycles. They're easy to read, they're easy to understand, they're scalable, and they encourage reusable code via the page object class. So next, we're gonna break down the Selenium Palm framework architecture. So the the first thing that you usually have in a POM framework is the test scripts. This is really where you set your step definitions for your test and what actions will be performed. The next section is the page objects layer. And this really consists of all the pages within the application under test. Inside this page object class are methods that are defined to perform specific actions on defined web elements. And finally, we have our web pages or our web browsers that we will be executing our tests against. I wanna dive a little bit deeper into the page object class and kind of explain what's happening here. So the first layer of the page object class is really our page class. At the top of our class, we have our defined web elements. Underneath that, we have our page object class. And within that class, we have our test methods and our actions. So some maintenance risk areas for this scenario are obviously our defined web elements at the top of the page. Those identifiers for those defined web elements can sometimes have a high chance of changing from time to time, which requires the tester to go in and update the defined web element IDs. The next spot is actually our test methods. In a perfect world, our test methods and our actions would call the defined web elements at the top of the page class and perform actions on them. But in the real world, there are a number of times where it might require the tester or engineer to write their own custom code within that test method or action, be it a list or an object that needs to be selected from a list dynamically. So how do we lower these risk areas that are occurring inside of our page object class? One way is to utilize a CNN model within our Selenium framework. Integrating a CNN model with Within our Selenium framework allows us to do a lot of things. It allows us to do element selection based on labels passed to the test script, which will no longer require us to define the web elements within the page class. It also reduces the overall maintenance of the page object class via the defined elements, the test methods of that custom code that we're writing, and the actions. So how do we do it? In a previous video, I covered how a team can begin to create an AI-enabled test strategy. The two key concepts from that video are creating two buckets, one AI candidates and another being non-AI candidates. The non-AI candidates being the human tester. And the thing that you wanna look at when you're creating those buckets are, what, are, what is my team trying to achieve? Are we trying to lower maintenance? Are we trying to make test authoring faster? Are we specifically looking to hand off the workload of identifying web element selection? This part is really key in defining how you would enable a convolutional neural network into your framework. So let's go over briefly what we would need to have set up to be able to integrate a convolutional neural network into our existing Selenium framework. First things first, in this example of Google, I've highlighted all the elements on the page. And one of the first things you need to do is you need to actually scrape the web elements from the page. So you need to collect and gather all the web elements from the application that are under test. While you're collecting those web elements, you also need to capture the identification for each web element. So those IDs, those XPaths, all that additional information that are associated with the element. Once you have that collected, then you need to send a list of the elements to the CNN model. After that model receives that list of elements, then you need to ask the CNN model which element in the list is the element we asked for. So if I send it a label of sign-in, I want it to return an element that matches the label of sign-in. And finally, we need to perform an action on the element requested. So if we switch over to look at what a Selenium plus convolution neural network model would look like. It's really the same as what Selenium Palm framework would look like. 
we still have our first layer, which is our test scripts and our defined test steps. And in the middle layer, which was our page objects layer, only now it's powered by a convolutional neural network for defining its web elements. We do this by having a generic method. And inside that generic method, we would be able to pass a label to a convolutional neural network model and based off that label, identify the element that needs to be selected. After that, we still have our final layer of web pages and web browsers for our test execution. So we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into the CNN Palm class architecture. So as you can see, it's very similar to how the page object model was with a few modifications. So at the very top, before in the page object model class, we had our defined web elements. Instead of that, now we have a classification method. And this classification method is really what classifies the label that's being passed to the model and finds the element that matches that label. Next, we still have our page class. Within that page class, we now have a generic method that will run a generic action. Instead of having to write custom code or having to define specific actions, we can now utilize this generic method to pass the label to the classifier to find the element that we need to perform the action on. So what are the steps that we actually need to take to integrate this into our existing framework? Here is a code example of the test setup. So the first thing we need to do is we need to call the generic method with the page class. Then we need to pass our label. In this case, we're actually gonna pass a label of sign in, which is very similar to how you would handle a page object in our existing automation framework. The next is really where the magic happens. This is where Inside the page object class, we define how that relationship with the convolutional neural network is. There's a number of tasks that we need to do within the page object class once we pass that label to the generic method. The first thing is we need to collect a list of elements. Then we need to pass that list of elements to the convolutional neural network model for classification. And finally, we need to return the element that matches the label that we passed it. In our code example here, you can see at the top, we have our categories, which is the categories within the convolutional neural network that we will be looking at. And we have a model parameter. And that model parameter is basically loading that convolutional neural network model that we generated previously. Inside our generic method, we have a parameter that will go out and generate a list of all the elements that are on the page. Once it has that list of elements, it'll then gather all that data and the elements to a list and then send that list with the label that we passed it to the CNN model. Once the model has it, it'll then iterate through that list until it finds an element that matches the label being passed to it. Once it finds that match, it will then return that element and an action can then be performed on the element. So what we have here now is a Palm framework that has been integrated with a CNN model. The importance here is that we no longer have to define our web elements. So we don't no longer have to spend time manually searching for IDs or XPaths. We can now focus on authoring the tests and creating really good test cases. On top of that, you have now empowered your tester with being able to focus in on other mission critical tasks. Whereas a test script could have took a half hour to two hours to complete, now only takes minutes, right? Because you no longer have to do all that extra work when generating the test case. So I want to thank everybody for joining us in this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you in the next video.